Hi students, we are now discussing question number 14 of paper 1 of physics of J Advanced 2022. So let's see what we have got in this question. So the question says that the binding energy of nucleons in a nucleus can be affected by pairwise coulombic repulsion. Assume that all the nucleons are uniformly distributed inside the nucleus. Let the binding energy of a proton, now guys pay attention here, this is very important, binding energy of a proton, of a proton, uh, B, E, uh, PB and the binding energy of a neutron be this much. So guys, before we start reading the option, let us talk about what do we mean when we say binding energy here. Okay, uh, so uh, if I say that binding energy of a proton, what I would uh, interpret this as, like let's say we have put Z minus one proton in a nucleus and we have put some number of neutrons also in the nucleus, let that number be A minus Z minus one. So these many neutrons have been put in the nucleus so that the overall mass number of this nucleus is A and the atomic number is Z minus 1. Uh, the mass number would be uh, A minus Z plus 1. I'm sorry. Okay. Now we intend to bring a proton from infinity to here. Okay. We intend to bring a proton from infinity to here. Now whatever work is done by the external agent in doing so. Okay. Binding energy would be negative of that, like binding energy, what do we say as binding energy? Binding energy would be the energy, amount of energy required to be given to the proton to remove it from the nucleus. Alright, so if we are bringing it, then whatever is the energy we need to bring, the negative of that will become the binding energy. In other words, the binding energy will be modulus of this external work. Okay, so that would mean the binding energy of the zth proton, mind you. It is not the binding energy of the entire nucleus. The binding energy of the entire nucleus would mean what? Let's try to understand that. If there are Z protons present here and A minus Z neutrons present here, and if I want to disintegrate this nucleus completely into a bunch of protons and neutrons, that means into its uh, constituent particles such that the distance between any two is pretty large. Okay, they are all separated from each other by infinite distances. Okay, in doing that, whatever energy I have to give, I will call that as the binding energy of the entire nucleus. Okay, right now we are discussing the binding energy of a proton. That would probably mean, that should mean the energy required, the energy that we need to give to the proton to remove it from the nucleus and to move it to infinity. Okay, now why is this distinction important? Because... If I talk about the binding energy of the entire nucleus, then I will have to take into consideration the total number of pairs that we are going to find. So if we have Z protons, then the total number of pairs of charged particles that we can get would be Z C2, that is Z into Z minus 1 upon 2. These would be the total number of pairs and the binding energy will be proportional to this number as suggested in the text here that it is affected by the pairwise coulombic repulsion. So when I'm talking about the binding energy of the entire nucleus, then I should consider all the pairs, all the pairs uh, that uh, can be formed. Okay, But if I'm talking about the binding energy of one specific proton, then I should be interested in only the pairs that this proton is going to make with other protons. And in this case, the, the proportionality should lie with this Z minus 1 because Z minus 1 protons will be, uh, pairs will be formed. Okay, so in this question, it is imperative that we understand the difference between binding energy of a nucleus and the binding energy of a proton. To understand this better, you can compare it with uh, an electron. For example, if I talk about the ionization energy of a sodium atom, then it means that the energy required to remove the first electron, the first electron, that means um, the, the outermost electron, Whatever energy that we require, that we call as the binding energy or the ionization energy. Okay. If we try to remove one another electron, we will leave some different amount of energy. If we try to remove another electron, we will need a different amount of energy. So, uh, depending upon which electron we are removing from the sodium atom, the amount of energy required will vary. And if I ask about the total amount of energy required to remove all the electrons and move them to infinity, move them to infinite separation from the new, from the atom also and from the other electrons also, then that would be a different value. So I'm trying to distinguish between the, these two factors here also, these two terms here also, and then I'm trying to attempt this question. Now guys, uh, so from this discussion, I think you are already judged that if we talk about the binding energy of the entire nucleus, 
then this option should be correct like then we can say then we can say uh, that uh, the binding energy of the protons of uh, of the nucle of, of all the protons in the nucleus okay that will be affected by this product okay uh, but but according to the text here the this and this represent binding energy of one proton and one neutron so i will reject this option a because z is present here so i will reject so guys that is my opinion and i'm giving that opinion at the risk of uh, getting contradicted by the official answer key that is yet to be released i'm pretty sure that when the official answer key gets released they might actually give this as the answer why am i saying so because there is a model of nucleus in which there is a term involving this also and this also but that term talks about the entire uh, binding energy of the nucleus not the binding energy of one proton so i believe that whoever made this question probably uh, took uh, uh, the the idea was inspired from that model okay but uh, i guess the term that have been used here uh, that term renders that model inapplicable right now because we are discussing binding energy of one proton so i guess uh, i have made my point enough so uh so what, what what do i want to conclude here i in my opinion uh, again at the risk of uh being wrong uh, i totally understand that but i will still hold my opinion valid so a should not be correct okay but i doubt that this will be given as the answer okay and if if challenged i don't think it will be changed also and then also i vouch i still vouch for a if i had to if i was writing the je examination and if i had to go for uh if i had to select the answers to this question i will not go for option a okay so this is incorrect now uh this difference in the binding energy of protons and neutrons this is proportional to a raised to power minus 1 by 3 you see here i will i think i will uh take inspiration from this relationship in which the radius of a nucleus depends on uh a power of 1 by 3 of uh the atomic number of the mass number okay so here i believe that whatever separation we are looking at that separation will be some factor of the radius of the nucleus and therefore and i expect that uh, factor to be inversely proportional because uh, as we write the coulombic interaction between a, chair, a pair of charged particles the distance comes in the denominator so based on that i believe this option should be the correct one okay this be now c option talks about that whether this should be positive or negative so let's try to understand this see if i talk about neutrons only if i talk about a nucleus which is made up of neutrons only let's consider a theoretical case then uh, i will require some amount of energy to move all the neutrons to infinity let that energy be x okay now if i consider the same number of protons as i had number of neutrons here if i consider the same number of protons to move them to infinity under the influence of nuclear forces only here the neutrons would be interacting because of nuclear force only so uh, if i consider only nuclear force to be applicable in in case of protons then i will require the same amount of energy but but because of coulombic repulsion among the uh, protons they are themselves trying to get apart to get away from each other therefore i may not require the same amount of energy i will require something less amount of energy to shift the protons to infinity so from this logic i believe that uh, the binding energy of protons should be less than the binding energy of neutrons and therefore if i now check this c option the binding energy of the proton uh, should be less than the binding energy of the neutron so that should be uh, a negative number so c option should be incorrect c option should be incorrect here okay and now if i go for option d if i go for option d it says that the binding energy of the proton increases if nuclear nucleus undergoes a beta decay emitting emitting a positron now what happens in a beta decay let's try to understand uh, in a beta decay if positron is being emitted then a proton gets converted into a neutron emitting a proton positron alongside uh, and along with this a uh, neutrino is also emitted okay so here we are saying that a proton gets converted into a neutron so this also means that we are moving from this system to this system like if i continue to do do uh, do these emissions if i continue to assume that uh beta emissions are happening continuously positrons are being emitted continuously then the this entire proton group will get converted into a neutron group which move which means that we are moving from this value of energy to this value of energy so we can say that we expect the binding energy to go up so d option says that 
the value increases if uh, nucleus undergoes a beta decay emitting a positron i believe that this option should also be correct so the correct answer to this question would be b and d i would say that it was a good question a calculation less question but a logical thought question so yeah i would go with pd but i'm i'm, I'm very very confident that uh, iit will probably give the answer to this as a b d i still i would say that i will go with option b and d of course you may agree with me you may disagree with me but i will voice my opinion thank you guys thank you for watching take care